Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. For today's video, our group are going to present about analysis of vanillin in white chocolate by gas chromatography. However, in this case study of chemist 260, we are going to refer to the journal of analysis of vanillin in meat powder. Next, these are our group members. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nuru Noha Bitinazurde and for today's video, I'm going to give a brief explanation about our case study. First and foremost, vanillins including vanillin of 3-methoxy-4-hydroxy-benzaldehyde and ethylvanillin of 3 ethoxy 4 hydroxy benzaldehyde are very important in flavoring additives in food industry. Therefore, vanillin and ethylvanilla are widely used as a food flavor enhancer due to their vanilla aroma and their strong milky flavor. However, so far, there is no national standard method for vanillin determination. In fact, there are studies that claim that no flavoring agents should be added in infant formula for infants within 6 months and below. In formula food for infants over 6 months years old and children, the maximum usage of vanillin, anti-vanilla and vanilla extract are 5 mg per 100 ml, which is the value of ready to use for instant food and the defined amount according to processing need. In addition, vanillin is allowed to use in infant supplementary cereal food and the maximum usage to use it is 7 mg over 100 g. However, there were few reported cases that nationally forbidden amount in vanillin was detected in several foreign brand face milk powder. Therefore, it is obvious that a quick and effective analysis method is needed for determining the vanillin content in food. In addition, for example, to put it in simply, the addition of meat powder in the chocolate related ingredients may help increase the flavor and milky taste in chocolate and also give a brand new taste to a specific ingredient. So how do we determine the vanillin content? One of the obvious ways is that we use solid phase microextraction which is SPME and it is a relatively new sample preparation technique that has been steadily increasing in popularity since its development in 1990. In addition, the use of SPME for the analysis of food was reviewed in many case studies. In addition, nowadays, many companies have introduced outer samplers compatible with SPME, which reduce the amount of manpower required per sample and increase the reproducibility. In addition, several methods for the detection of vanillin and ethyl vanillin in meat powder and extract have been published in the literature including gas chromatography, spectrophotometry, high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, voltammetry, capillary electrophoresis, CEP, along with liquid chromatography coupled with mass spectrometry. In addition, there is a study that reported a SPME coupled with gas chromatography and mass spectrometry method for the identification of volatile components in vanilla extract as well as flavorings. And the study optimized SPME extraction conditions to detect vanillin and ethyl vanillin in vanilla product samples with the goal of determining the type of vanilla product. And we can say that this method was purely qualitative and no attempts of Quantification were reported. In addition, each of the methods has drawbacks and uh, there are no quantitative determination of vanillin reported as well as active vanillin in milk powder. Therefore, these methods that I mentioned earlier have low recovery and require a large amount of organic solvent in extraction and the sample preparation produced uh, procedure are complicated. So, low sensitivity and selectivity of the above methods could easily lead to false positive results. So, they started to develop a promising method for the sampling of complex mi mixture. So, complicated metric interval was eliminated due to the selectivity of extraction materials. So, by doing that, the false positive result is avoided. In this case study, the objectives are the, to determine the vanillin and anti-vanillin content in meat powder by using qualitative methods and second is to determine the advantages of qualitative methods during analytical procedure. Next, I'm going to explain more about gas chromatography. And in this context, we're going to talk about principles, concept, and instrumentation of gas chromatography. Now, let's talk about the principles of gas chromatography. There are three principles which are a sample is being injected at the injector and vaporized into the chromatographic column and the second one is that the sample is transported through the column by the flow of inert gases 
mobile face. And the third one is as the sample passes through the column, they are separated and detected electronically by detector. Next, moving on to the concept of gas chromatography. The concept is that the technique for separating components based on their volatilities, which based on their differences of boiling point. There are two types of gas chromatography, which are gas liquid chromatography, GLC, and gas solid chromatography, GSC. Lastly, for instrumentation of gas chromatography, there are five types of instrumentation in gas chromatography, which are carrier gas, injector, column, detector, and display system or printer and monitor. Attached below is the diagram of instrument of gas chromatography. Hi, my name is Shazwani and I'll be discussing the methodology of this experiment. In sample preparation, 1 gram of milk powder and 2 gram of sodium chloride were mixed with 5 ml of dionized water in a 20 ml headspace bottle and the solution was mixed by a MS3 basic turbine for 3 minutes. Next, in the standard preparation, to prepare the vanillin and the ethyl vanillin standard stock solution, 500 mg per liter of 0.05 gram of the standard tungsten was dissolved in the acetonitrile to make a final 100 ml solution respectively. To prepare the vanillin and ethyl vanillin intermediate solution, 50 mg per liter of 10 ml standard solution was diluted with the acetonitrile to make 100 ml respectively. To prepare a series of matrix mixture standard working solution, the standard intermediate mixture solutions were progressively diluted with a blank milk powder matrix. The solution were prepared freshly the day of the analysis. Standard curves were plotted with peak area versus analyte concentration after measurement under instrument working condition. Lastly, for the chromatography mass spectrometry analysis, agilent gas chromatograph coupled with mass spectrometer GCMS with EI source and CTC 3-in-1 autosampler was applied to quantify the content of vanillin and ethyl vanillin. The sample was incubated at 80 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes with the rate rotation at 500 RPM. After incubation, a 65 micrometer DVB fiber was exposed to the hex space of heated vial for 40 minutes. The fiber was then dissolved in the injection pot for 5 minutes. Data were collected using ChemStation software, then Autopure Helium 99.99% passed through a gas clean chromatography mass spectrometry filter and was used as the carrier gas at a flow rate of 1 ml per minute. The injection volume was set at 1 microliter with a non splitting mode. The injection port temperature was held at 260 degrees Celsius. Then, a capillary column was used for separation. The initial oven temperature was set at 80 degrees Celsius with an initial 2-minute holding followed by a program temperature ramp of 15 degrees Celsius per minute to 280 degrees Celsius and was held at 280 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes. Next, the interface temperature was set at 275 degrees Celsius. The monitoring iron used were as follows. The solvent delay was 5 minutes. The chromatograms of the samples and the mass spectra of vanillin and ethyl vanillin are as shown. Under the above chromatographic condition, the baseline totally disunited between the peak of vanillin 9.647 min and ethyl vanillin 9.973 min. According to the law of similar mutual solubility, non-polar fiber coating had higher extraction efficiency for non-polar volatile compounds, while the polar fiber coating had higher extraction efficiency for polar compounds. The study was conducted under the following parameters, which are at the temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, oscillator rotation rate at 500 RPM, incubation time for 10 minutes, and HSSPME time for 20 minutes. Under these conditions, the extraction effects of seven different types of extraction fibers on a matrix standard mixture solution were tested and the results are shown. The extraction capacity of the seven different types of extraction fibers could be compared according to the amount of extracted vanillin and ethyl vanillin, chromatographic peak resolution, and peak shape. The analytes obtained from the seven types of extraction fibers were well separated. However, the chromatogram obtained from fiber had relatively distinct 
daily, which was mainly because this type of extrusion fiber had strong absorbability to tested components. So we move on to the desorption temperature. During the desorption, a hysteresis effect was generated when the component content was high and was significantly eliminated when it was low. So next, I will talk about the extraction time. The extraction time required for adsorption equilibrium was studied when keeping other parameters invariant. The areas of the analytes increased as the time increased within 10 to 30 minutes. When the extraction time exceeded to 40 minutes, the peak area becomes stable, which indicates that the vapor liquid equilibrium was achieved at 40 minutes. In this study, a method for determination of vanillin and ethyl vanillin content in the milk powder was established. This method greatly eliminated the interference of the complicated metric in the milk powder by simple pretreatment. Vanillin and ethyl vanillin perform a good linear tree within the range of 0.1 and 0.05, and the coefficient coefficient were 0.992 and 0.991, respectively. The method is processed advantageous in the term of high analytical efficient, convenient operation process, wide linear range, low detection limit, good selectivity, little interference, good accuracy, good and good precision. Therefore, the valid method is suitable for the repeat determination of the vanillin and ethylvanillin content in the milk powder. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.